Welcome back to our fifth and final round here, just off the back of a heartbreaking loss to Mono Green Tron. And I think we may have been on the play for every game in this league, which is very atypical. Uh, we're going to keep this hand. See if we can <clears throat> scrape together a nice 4-1 uh, four here. Mm, Snow-covered mountain. So this could be... Pon uh, sorry, not Ponza. Um, this could be... What's that deck? Scred Red. So we'll go ahead and play out our... Ooh. Is this free win red? Yep. Okay. So. Are they going to Blood Moon us yet? Chalice of the Void on one. Okay. Where was this when we needed it? So we're just going to play out the Strand here. Because they're going to try and like. Get us with a Blood Moon here. Is my is my guess for their next trick. Okay, looks like they might be trying to play around our mana leak. Glorybringer. Okay. So, let's crack this for an island. Target this. We still need to find an answer to this to this Chandra, which I don't think we're gonna actually be able to do in time. Uh, well, we'll go ahead and shock in this, and unfortunately we're gonna be at their mercy next turn because we need this Restoration Angel to resolve. So is this a hasty thing here? Yes, it is. Okay. Wow. Things are going quite well for our opponent. So to get this angel down, link our wall, draw a card. Okay, a Skyland, all right. So unfortunately, our Shan their Chandra is going to get to blow up our angel next turn, and uh, we don't really have anything going on after that. this into play, so we'll get to minus three their Chandra on our Angel, and then we're going to have a real real struggle after that. Bunch of mana for a Glorybringer. Okay, can't do anything about that. And I assume they're just going to hang back. Nope. Four damage to a creature, a non-dragon creature. Okay, well they'll just do that. I'm not familiar with Glorybringer. Glory uh, play standard. Okay, there's a negate. Um... So we'll play to our outs here, but I think our opponent just managed to get the drop on us here. Okay, uncastable card. <laughs> okay. If these are good. The big angels seem good. Celestial Purge seems like a card that we want. that I think we got to go into this with the expectation that uh, we obviously can't keep a hand that doesn't interact early with their game plan and I 
I'm not familiar with the free win red deck enough to know what the what the cards are that you want to... Like, I don't know if they have a bunch of ground pounders or anything, but... So we'll cut the walls entirely. If they play... Storm Breath Dragon, this is one of our only answers. I doubt they really have any creatures they're not going to be attacking with, so I think we'll cut the Supreme Verdict just because it's potentially more difficult to cast. So in, since they're in mono red, they shouldn't really have a way to deal with enchantments. Got to make one more cut here. We're going to keep Spell Snare in because it can catch a Chalice on one. And again, we just need we just need something to interact. Or if they go for like a ritual, we can snare a ritual. We just need something to interact with them early because that's obviously the quickest way that we lose in this matchup. Maybe we'll cut one settle. So unfortunately there's a big tension here between wanting to get basic lands to play around Blood Moon uh, for a Cryptic Command versus our other threats. We cannot keep this hand. We cannot keep this hand either. This hand is just asking for them to just dump their hand all over us, turn one or turn two, kind of like they did the first game, and then we'll lose on the spot. So as soon as they're done making their decision here, we'll mulligan. We have we have to mulligan to something that interacts with what their deck is doing. And this hand just does not. opponent's deck to me is one of those interesting, I guess, modern decks that just, it's extremely powerful in what it does, uh, but on the hands that it has that don't just blow your opponent out of the water on the first turn or two, I feel like it, it can potentially struggle, which I think is why you see a deck like that, not, you don't really see a deck like that at the top tables of a modern event, typically. Um, I think it's very, it's very wishy-washy on, uh, on how successful it may or may not be based on its based on its opening hand, because you can easily get a hand that just doesn't really do anything with rituals and simian spirit guides and, and clunky stuff like that. And uh, I also think that in the matchups where where either your chalice or your blood moon is not that great, um, it leans strongly on powering out one of those early prison aspects or pr yeah pr sorry prison like lock pieces. So I feel uh. It's, 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 it's a deck that, for me personally, really doesn't... It's kind of the anti antithesis of, of what we're trying to do, in a way. Um, where, again, they're just trying to say, okay, well, uh, get, get the powerful thing going on turn one, turn two, and if you can't just beat this, then you lose. Uh, whereas we're trying to uh, drag the game out a little bit, you know, get, to, get us to trade resources, and... Uh, Make some make some meaningful decisions again. This is one of the criticisms uh, of the modern format, I think. But I mean, I think Legacy has this to a to a degree as well. There's, I mean, there's a, basically this version of the of a deck in Legacy as well, um, like the Moon Stompy kind of decks. And they're 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 not decks that I personally have a have a strong draw to. Um, so hopefully, our opponent is um, going to be back soon. But, but again, it's modern, and you never know what you're gonna what you're gonna sit across from. Again, this is this is exactly the type of deck I would expect to face uh, at any type of a modern of a modern event. And just like I was saying for the last match, like you know, in the Tron matchup is just modern is so diverse and it's so powerful in what the in what the decks can do that you can never be you can never be ready for anything or for everything rather. And um, it uh, makes one wonder how the spell uh, counterspell would impact the format. Just having that 
semi-universal answer with a, with a uh, steep timing restriction on it. I, I, I want to do, I'm laying the groundwork right now for a, for a video all about, okay, they keep seven. Oof. Well, it's a shame to, to go out with a whimper here, but looks like, looks like that's just the way this league is going to go. And we just skipped our turn apparently. So yeah. All right. The dangers of of the F2, I guess, the F6, or whatever that thing is. But being unable to find the interaction, I mean, we weren't really able to do anything this game anyway, I don't think. So. Discard and draw. Create four red, red dragons. Okay. So I guess our plan is to start attacking his his dude here with the Snapcaster. And if this is all he has going on, um, we could potentially get back into this. I mean, we have some basic lands, but of course that's never all that they have going on. So, so the Eidolon means that we just lose for sure. And I forgot to, slap, to play the Snapcaster. So, yep. Sorry guys, I'm just a little little out of it here at the end of this league it's been a it's been a slog my um my magic endurance is uh one of the things that i'm definitely trying to work on here <laughs> okay But yes, we are very, very dead. We just, we just didn't have it this game. And again, it's just a, yeah, it's just a shame. Just a shame to go out this way, Tron into into this, but like I said, it's modern. Anything goes. All right, well, like I said, it's too bad. It's a shame we went out that way. We went uh, final final record of of three and three and two, so at least we uh, we cashed back into the league. Um, was going to do this in a separate video, but since that went relatively quickly, we'll just go back to the deck here and uh, take a look at it, talk about it, some some final thoughts here. So first impression, deck super sweet. I had a blast playing it. Uh, I feel like now, obviously, I'm by no means really well versed in the mid range archetype, but uh, I felt like I had slightly less agency with this deck versus the uh, Salvato Miracles deck we were playing the last couple of weeks. Um, but even so, the deck was a blast. I uh, had a really good time with it. The power's definitely there. Um, and again, it's, it's a shame we kind of we trounced our first two our first two matchups: uh, Grixis, Death Shadow, and Ponza. We felt really felt really strong in those games. Um, the The most interesting game out of all of these that we played here with this deck was definitely the Blue White Control uh, Miracles matchup. 
I have to go back through and read the article that I linked in the original deck tech for this deck. Um, the Card Knock Life article. I forget whether it said, I think it said maybe slightly favored or even was the, the blue-white control versus blue-white mid-range mirror. And I, I want to revisit one thing that I did there. Is I was, when I was thinking about my sideboarding strategy, I said, well, why don't we just bring in all the threats and overload on, on uh, or sorry, yeah, bring in all the threats and take out a lot of like the counters and the removal and things like that. And I was reflecting on that uh, last night, and I was kind of thinking to myself that maybe that wasn't the correct way. Because again, we, we won that match kind of on a technicality. Uh, our opponent timed out. And uh, he, we actually chatted a little bit after the fact, and he was saying, you know, oh, nine out of ten times, I think I beat, I think I beat your deck and everything. And he did have some, some uh, poor draws that he was, that he saw that he needed to tell us about during the match. And I, I agree with him. I think that the, I think that from uh, uh, that standpoint, I think that maybe the blue-white control deck is probably maybe a little favored, especially based on the way I sideboarded. Which again, that's what I want to talk about. Is I felt like after after looking back on it, I felt like by I took the, the weaker. I took a weaker plan there because I, f I feel like um, the mid-range creature-based matchup is basically the bread and butter of the Miracles deck. You know, that's the deck that they want to see the most. And I think that by taking out some of the counter magic, I removed the element of our deck that allows us to keep our opponent off balance and to just kind of get there with a Kitchen Finks or, or something, or a Resto Angel. Um, I think that by, by t taking the making the choice I did, I weakened our overall game plan because I transformed our deck into something that was probably more easy for our opponents to just kind of one-for-one one us and um, answer our threats that way. Even though we brought in additional threats, um, again, it, as you kind of saw as the match wore on and on and on, you know, oh, land a Jace, and then the Jace is just just about infinite fogs. Uh, they can just keep on bouncing our threats back to our hand, especially Kitchen Finks, which is really, really cumbersome in that matchup. It's nice in the fact that it survives a board wipe that's not Terminus, um, but on the, on that same token, it's, uh, it's, it's very slow, and um, Snapcaster beats can only get you so far, and of course they have their own Snapcasters. So we, we him and I both made mistakes kind of on, on each of our respective ends, but I do think that my biggest mistake was the game plan I chose in that matchup. I think next time I would definitely keep in basically the clicks and the resto angels, and I think I would board in all the counter magic and just try to get there with our flash threats and being and, and the Teferi, of course, and uh, use those cards to try and sidestep our opponent and what they're doing and just kind of take more of like a protect the queen type of strategy where we land a threat and then just use our use our counter magic to disrupt our opponent just long enough uh, to get there. Interestingly enough, I don't I would have to go back and watch the video, but I'm pretty sure that in our in our game two, I don't even think I drew a single one of my colonnades. Uh, so even if we would have drawn just one colonnade at some point through that match when we were just kind of both in like a top deck scenario, I think we could have got there um, and beat him and beat him for real. But so that's one thing that I definitely wanted to address. Uh, and then again, it was just it was just kind of heartbreaking. I felt I, I recorded this league over two days, my Saturday, my Sunday, and Saturday I was I was on this high, you know, I was I was undefeated, three and zero, felt really good, and then today it was just it was just a, it was heartbreaking to you know to go from to bounce from Tron to that uh, mono mono red wins deck, um, which and I, you know, I try and magic magic is magic, and that's and that's the way it goes. But it was it was kind of. A little irritating to, to end on that note after we had done so, so well. Um, but yeah, so at least we, at least we managed to, to cash the league. And I did, I did even apologize to the blue white opponent. I, you know, I said to him, Hey, if this was a paper game, I definitely would have scooped to you. You had it. I don't think I could have beat him, but since this was moto, I, you know, I said, eh, I wanted to make sure I at least, at least got got our entry fee back and everything, and, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah, no, I get that." He's like, "Never, sc never scoop online." His his exact words, his or her exact words. So, uh, again, no no bad no bad feelings there. Um, and he even admitted that he disliked the way he or she played out the Sphinx of the of the last word, which is a sweet sweet card that I definitely didn't see coming out of our out of our opponent's deck. But so that was that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the league. I definitely feel the competition was a bit more stiff and that the uh, matches we played were, were a bit more meaningful in terms of what we can what we can learn from them and everything. So 
moving forward, I hope to I hope to be able to record more leagues. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll just keep playing blue white, and we will we'll keep improving and continue to learn. And I would love to to engage you all in discussion uh, about the about the decks, about play lines of play, and decisions we can make about sideboard options and things like that. Uh, so. I hope, again, once again, hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you were able to get something away from it. Or if, at the very least, I hope that my my play was decent enough that you were able to be entertained if you're one of those veteran players, you know, that's watching this. Um, hopefully you weren't just, uh, didn't just have like a vein bulging in your neck the whole time watching this scrub uh, drag this deck, this beautiful, beautiful deck through the mud here. So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and uh, I will catch you next time. So until then, everybody take care.